You never knew. That was his power. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Can you imagine, as you're walking through your life, doing whatever it is you're doing, to discover, to actually discover who you really are and what your life was really about, and to unexpectedly find or become aware of something that you had never known, never thought, never conceived, never even imagined, and it changed the entire course of your life forever. The discovery of one thing changed you for your eternal life. Imagine that. That's what I'm trying to show you. And what happened to me was I discovered the truth. And when I say I discovered the truth, that's exactly what I mean. I discovered the truth. In the world, a lot of people think they know a lot of truth or some truth. However, there is the truth. And Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In the beginning of this quest, I'll show you something as simple as when you turn this image upside down, it becomes something totally different. Well, the Bible tells us that Elohim turned everything upside down. It says it in Ecclesiastes 7, and who can equalize that which Elohim has turned upside down? Then the question becomes, who is Elohim? Isaiah tells us, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. Go to hell. Where do you think I come from? <laughs> Look into my eyes. I want to see you. Well, when you keep seeing the devil, a.k.a. the serpent, turning things upside down, it starts to become painfully obvious who is turning everything upside down. What about witches? They hate Jesus. Witchcraft is forbidden. That's why they have crystal balls. What about Krampus? He turns the kids upside down and steals them as above, so below the Masons, there's a right side up you and there's an upside down you and that's the big sin against God. It's like taking a circular rainbow and splitting it in half and making instead of one eye, making one eye that's above and one eye that's below. Why do you think at all the big monuments, they have reflecting pools like the Washington Monument and like the Taj Mahal, even where the federal building bombing in Oklahoma City was blown up. They put a reflecting pool. It's very common because the as above, so below thing is simply a reference to Satan who's running the host body system. And who do you say that I am? I say you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. In saying that, Simon Barjona, you show yourself to be blessed among men. Flesh and blood have not revealed this truth to you. It has come from my Father in heaven. And so now I will call you Peter. And upon this rock I will build what I must call my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it.
To you I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. To you I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That is an irrefutable fact that was just shown to you. And now everything will expand from the foundation that has just been given to you. You may have heard the saying, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was getting the world to believe he doesn't exist. If you could prove the actual existence of the devil and you could show it and demonstrate it, what would that mean for you? What would that mean for the rest of the world? I can see him in the mirror and he looks a lot like me. I can hear him whisper, son, I got just what you need with my Couldn't be no clearer The biggest fight in this whole life Is a devil in the mirror In the Bible, the book of Daniel mentions the end of the world when it talks about the time of trouble. And the time of trouble translates as the time of the female rival. So the Great Tribulation is called the time of the female rival. So in the book of Jeremiah, in the Bible, it talks about, in the end, a woman shall compass a man. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. And the word woman is the same word from Genesis 1 when it says an Elohim. The word Elohim translates to gods in the plural of the supreme God, angels, judges, gods. It said, let us create man in our image. So in the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. And the word in Genesis 1, as well as in Jeremiah 31, 22, the word woman is female from the sexual form and the root of the word is so important to understand because the very beginning of the Bible in the formation of male and female by Elohim not by the Lord God but by Elohim the word female means to puncture literally to perforate with more or less violence to specify designate liable to curse to pierce and to strike through. That is the word for the for the word female in Genesis 1. Let us create man in our image. So in the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female to puncture, to perforate, more or less with violence, to specify, designate, liable, to curse, to pierce and to strike through. That's the word for female in Genesis 1. And in Jeremiah 31, 22, and the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth, a woman to puncture, perforate, designate liable, to curse, pierce, and strike through, shall compass a man. And the word compass means to revolve and to surround, and to surround around in a border. In the end of the world, everyone's required to take the mark of the beast. And the word mark of the beast means circumvallation in a siege. And we'll talk about that at the end of this video. So as we begin our quest, the best place to start a quest is with a question. There's no way to answer the riddle without asking a few questions. Remember Jesus told us we could tell every tree by its fruit. It's fascinating because if you think about it and you understand it, it's very, very simple. I have an animal like a beaver. It knows inherently to build a dam. It knows inherently to chop down trees with its teeth. It's very obvious what a beaver is by what a beaver does. So you could apply, you could tell every tree by its fruit by simply looking at a beaver and what a beaver does. You only have to watch its actions and you know 
it's a beaver. But what if you were to take a beaver and put it in a rabbit suit? A rabbit was chewing down trees and cutting limbs and dragging them into the middle of a pond and building a nest. You looked at that animal, even though it looked just like a rabbit, you'd have to ascertain, well, it does everything a beaver does. It, it looks like a rabbit, so what is it? That's a beaver, but it looks like a rabbit because a beaver does what a beaver does and it's built into the DNA of a beaver. Same as the serpent race. The serpent race manifests itself. It glorifies itself and through this video you will see many manifestations of the serpent race to a degree that's so overwhelming there's no way to deny it because the data will be so overwhelming that you would simply have to choose to overlook it or deny it and to live in some form of delusion in order not to believe or to understand it. So in our quest for understanding the female rival in the end of the world, we have to pay attention to the obvious and the manifestations that are around us every day in plain sight because the serpent race will naturally manifest itself. The Bible tells us that hell is female. Hell hath enlarged herself beyond measure. The Bible tells us also, come out of her, my people. The system is considered a female system. Her sins are piled as high as heaven, and the time of her judgment has come. And the Bible also refers to God's children as being carried away captive, as in the days of the captivity in Babylon. Metaphorically speaking, God's children were carried away captive to another land where they were a hostage. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So come out of her, my people. The obviousness of the twin female origin of the earth and of the human species is impossible to be overlooked at this point. The evidence that surrounds it is not explainable any other way. And they're mocking everybody. Let's watch it again. Women! Are you guys vaginas? Women. Source material is what we are. Source material? The source is where you come from. Wow. These are demons. Oh my god, what are they doing? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Is this performance art? Would you say this is your guys' performance art? Would you say that it's our performance art? It kind of looks like it, but I'm not sure what your intentions are. Pure joy is our intention. That's the only intention. How long did it take you to make your costumes? Since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of time. All right, he's alone. Now send her in. Three seconds ago, we gave Ian Rappaport a Bud Light and a choice. Ian is not an actor. He has no idea what's going to happen next. I think I could do that. They're coming in now, guys. Open the doors. Joe. Good evening. <laughs> Hello, Lily. Hey! There. <laughs> Come on. It's Lily. It's Lily. Hey, Don. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Nice to see you. Are we wearing the same coat? Yeah, nice, hey. Jeff. Stand by. Hey, Captain. Open the door. Door, 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 door. Twins. Yes. This is a bizarre night. Take care, Ian. Everyone here is a twin? <laughs> My mind is blown. <laughs> the Vatican 
is built in the shape of a serpent wearing a crown. And the building next to it, Audience Hall, is also built in the shape of a serpent. So it's one serpent that is splitting into another serpent. Parthenogenesis is a form of asexual reproduction in which a female prototype begins the process by self-fertilization and creating more of its own kind. And then during the process is able to transgender, therefore incestuously breeding with itself to create a breeding population and establishing a population. That is called parthenogenesis, which translated means virgin genesis. It's very apparent that the Catholic Church worships the virgin, a female mother goddess figure. And also the buildings that they worship, the female mother goddess figure in, are built to represent virgin genesis, parthenogenesis, by a reptilian form of creation. So it's easy to ascertain that the Catholic Church is obviously run by the serpent. This is made very apparent by the manifestation of the building and by the manifestation of the altars that are inside the building, the snake having an altar that's a dead sheep, but the entire sheep is made up of angels, suggesting that the serpent is eating angels, which is exactly what the Bible says in Isaiah 14. I will arise above the stars, the angels of El. I will be like the Most High. So doesn't the Bible tell us that the coming of the Messiah, the Christ, will be called Immanuel? Isaiah 7, there it is. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Immanuel. Immanuel is the name given to Jesus, prophesied the coming of the Messiah. You shall call his name Emmanuel. So Emmanuel, it's a conjunction of 5973 and Hebrew word 410. The first word 5973, which is the Emmanu part, it says it means with us is. So now I'll go back. And then the second part of the word is Hebrew word 410. And it is El, the Almighty God. The name of the Almighty God is we also know that the Bible says in Hosea that we will become sons of the living God. The living God, the God of life, which is El, again, the Almighty God. So let me ask you a question. Why does Genesis 126 say, So Elohim created man in his own image. Elohim, gods of the supreme God. So Elohim created to cut down as a formative process. So Elohim created man in his own image. Okay, so here's the creation of man in the image of Elohim. It means to shade, a phantom, figuratively an illusion. Resemblance hints a representative figure especially an idol, a vain show. So Elohim is creating a system that is separate from El, the Almighty God. That's why El, the Almighty God, has to come into the system to repurchase those that were led astray. We know this is a fact because Satan told Jesus, who is Emmanuel, with us is El, if you will bow down and worship me, I'll give you all these this is mine to give. All authority has been given to me in this kingdom. So whose kingdom is the flesh? Who owns the flesh? Well, Satan said it was all his to give. If you bow down and worship me, I can give it all to you. We also know that the formation of the flesh is in Genesis 1 when Elohim said, let us create man in our image. So in the image of Elohim, created he him, male and female, created he them. Let me go to Isaiah again, ready? How art thou fallen from heaven, the Lucifer son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Back to Genesis 1. So Elohim created man in his own image, Barah, to create, 
to cut down as a formative process. Okay, so what was his work? Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. Why do you think there's male and female reproductive systems in the mouth of a serpent? Let me ask you another question. Why do you think a bunch of people are standing inside of a serpent that's wearing a crown building, singing to Lucifer, dawning his own creation, which is the flesh, male and female reproductive systems? Flama seus, Lucifer matutinus inveniat. Why does it say in Ezekiel, Thou sittest in the seat of Elohim? Son of man, say to the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God. So the Lord God is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, I am El, the Almighty God. I sit in the seat, the population, the assembly, the dwelling place. I sit in the seat of Elohim, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not El, although you set your heart as the heart of Elohim. Why does it say in Isaiah, I will exalt my throne, the word throne meaning flesh, above the angels of God, the stars or the angels? So, Lucifer said, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. Let's look at the word throne. To plump fill Apollos, to cover for clothing or secrecy, to conceal self. Let's look at the root of that word. To be covered with flesh. I will exalt my throne, my flesh, the place where I'm hiding, above the stars, the princes of God. Now, See El, the Almighty God. There's no doubt that the one that Lucifer is out to arise above is El. You know, the Bible says in Romans 8, the flesh is enmity against God. Do you know what the word enmity means? Hatred. You know what the root of that word is? Satan. The flesh is Satan. Now you know why Lucifer's sitting in the seat of Elohim. Because now we have to be bought back. Because it says again in Ezekiel, though thou set thine heart as the heart of Elohim, 
and we have to give our hearts back to Jesus or we go into eternal damnation. So the data and the revelation do not lie as they are made manifest in all forms of human expression. Buildings exemplify the female energy as being built in the shape of serpents. Music artists exemplify the same energy by manifesting lyrics as well as performances exhibiting the truth right before your eyes that the system is cannibalistic and the system is all around you all the time. Now I'm gonna eat you, fool. I eat boys up, breakfast and lunch. Then when I'm thirsty, I drink their blood. Carnivore animal, I am a cannibal. I eat boys up, you better run. The devil worshiping horses says human sacrifices, cannibalism, candles and exorcism, animals having sex with them, camels, mammals and rabbits, but I don't get into that, I kick the habit, I just... Instead of blood lovers, I'm trapped with blood sucking motherfuckers for eternity. Brought me here to straight feed on a nigga, all because I said to a stripper, I love the way you make it slither. So at this point, let's ask the question on our quest. How is it possible that so many manifestations are obvious, but so few people are able to see them or to acknowledge that they exist? And also, how is it possible when presented with these manifestations that the information means little to nothing to the people that it's presented to? They seem to not care or they seem to not understand what they're being shown is the actual mystery of their own existence but there exists a veil over their mind and they're unable to conceive or they're unable to penetrate it with their mind it's as if they're walking around half asleep or in a trance again later in this video we'll show you the trance that they are in it was made manifest in genesis 2. so if ever there was a truth or a single truth that explained or exemplified the human condition, it has become too obvious to ignore now without choosing to live in a state of delusion. If you're presented with facts such as the Vatican is a snake or the largest altar in the world is a dead sheep made up of angels being eaten by a snake and the same agenda occurs over and over and over and over again through all forms of media and architecture and all kinds of presentations, there's no way to ignore the reality without being delusional. Again, the Bible says, because they had pleasure in unrighteousness, God will send them strong delusion, so they believe the lie. The word delusion is a false belief or judgment about external reality held despite the incontrovertible evidence to the contrary occurring especially in mental conditions. It is also the state of being deluded or deceived or misled or fooled by trickery. The Bible says those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. By turning the world upside down or by turning the angels upside down in the world is a better way to say it. The angels have been deluded and they've been tricked. They were brought into a host body system. They were carried away captive. They were put into a host body system believing Lucifer that they wouldn't die. But once they got their host body, they were unable to see and unable to recognize that they were only now in prisons and that they did not any longer have their connection with the Father because another source had taken over their form of connection. Another way of saying it is the voice inside their head changed. There was not just one voice, but there became other voices and therefore they were misled and they were deluded. So after seeing so many images that show one thing, but it actually being another, as simple as an image of the Virgin being a dead sheep or an image of what looks like a church actually being a snake wearing a crown, or what looks like a bunch of angels together really turns into a big dead sheep 
as well as male and female reproductive systems. Those who are not able to see it have been deluded into believing it is not the very thing that is destroying them. If they're not able to see it, if they're not able to perceive it and understand the meaning, then they've been deluded. The Bible says because they had pleasure and unrighteousness, God will send them strong delusion. The Bible also says in Genesis 2, when Adam is put to sleep, it says stupefied into a trance, stupefied with death or with sleep. At that time, Eve was taken out of his side, creating a dualistic system in opposition to each other. One being asleep and the one that came out of the side bent the other direction. It says the curve from the rib to bend. And it means a part opposite. When the Bible says, I will make a meat for him, it literally means an opposite counterpart in which during the course of our lives, if you discover the truth, you meet your opposite counterpart, therefore being self-actualized and becoming whole in Christ. It's a mystery beyond mysteries. So let us recap some of the information. If we look at the Bible in Proverbs 25, it says, it is the glory of Elohim to conceal a matter it is the honor of kings to search it out. The first act we see in the Bible that is done by Elohim is the creation of male and female in the image of him. Elohim said, let us create man in our own image. So in the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. So Elohim created a male and female system and that system was designed to conceal something. Now that you've had a closer look, the system was designed to conceal the female energy which started the system through parthenogenesis, virgin genesis. Again, explaining the reason the Vatican is built in the shape of a snake, wearing a crown and birthing out of its side is another snake audience hall. You have two buildings representing the serpent race, concealing themselves in a host body system where Lucifer is the anointed cherub that covereth as exemplified in Ezekiel 28. The entire building and altar is a manifestation of the Bible. The serpent is the race of beings. The serpent is bringing the angels into its system in the form of a large dead sheep because they will be the sacrifice brought by Lucifer the light bringer. So Lucifer the light bringer brought the Elohim, the shining ones, into the serpent's system. It is the glory of Elohim to conceal a matter. The angels come into the system where they're inverted and that's exemplified in Ecclesiastes 7 who can equalize or make straight or equalize that which Elohim has turned upside down. So the angels come into the system where they're inverted so they can be destroyed. Their destruction ends up ultimately in the pit where they're converted into a locust. If you don't get converted in this system and you don't turn back to the living God, El the Almighty God, then you are consumed by that race of beings and you are assimilated into a locust. And that is exemplified by the canopy in the middle of the Vatican with the four corner posts being the queen of heaven, as well as the dragon, as well as a locust because the queen, the female energy, she is the one that gets the angels in the trap. And if they don't come to the knowledge of the truth, then they are consumed by her system. It's truly fascinating the way the enemy uses imagery and uses symbology and names. One name the enemy uses a lot is Venus. Venus is synonymous for Lucifer. And you'll see the Venus flytrap used in conjunction with the destruction of angels. I've seen Venus flytraps eating sheep, that the sheep's head is disguised inside the Venus flytrap, showing that Venus is eating a sheep. Again, Satan is, or Lucifer is eating a sheep. There's all forms of this. Venus flytraps are exemplified also as vaginas. 
why in the world would someone have a Venus flytrap tattoo that's really a vagina? The symbology is what gives them away. It's easy to knock them off because of all their symbology. It's easy to discover their plans when you understand their symbology. So let's analyze some data. Let's look at the Vatican. Again, the Vatican is a snake and it is birthing another snake. Two serpents. In the mouth of the serpent, the Vatican is a sheep made up of a bunch of angels. So you have a serpent, angels, and a sheep. Let's look at downtown Grand Junction. There's a statue in downtown Grand Junction. It's a guy hugging a girl, but it is also a serpent strangling a sheep. Let's look at a car that my wife gave me. Two girls sitting in a tree. It says when you find yourself out on a limb, but if you simply rotate the card, it's a serpent eating a sheep given to me by my own wife. It just happens to be identical to the statue in Grand Junction. Let's look at the tattoo on this guy's back. It's an angel bound together with a demon, but the entirety, the entire sum of the tattoo makes up a sheep. So the angel and the demon form a sheep, and then the devil is looking up from the pit in anticipation of receiving the energy from the relationship of the angel that is bound to the demon in agony. And when you invert the entire image, it becomes a worm sucking up the energy from the angel and the demon relationship. In Guatemala, there is a pyramid. When you turn the pyramid upside down, the image that looked like a king wearing a really flamboyant headdress becomes another sheep and superimposed right on the face of the sheep is the devil. So again, we have the same common denominator over and over again. From a skateboard shop in the mall called Zoomies, there's an image of a sheep that's had its head cut off and there is a door in space and out of that door in space coming from another dimension is what looks like the same identical thing that Miley Cyrus's neoprene red suit looks like in a video called Mother's Daughter. In the video Mother's Daughter, which is another way of saying parthenogenesis, Miley Cyrus is wearing a red neoprene suit with silver teeth on her crotch, suggesting that her vagina is carnivorous, that eats whatever goes in it, which is exactly what the example is of all these other things. If there's a skate shot, that exemplifies the exact same agenda as Miley Cyrus in a video called Mother's Daughter. How is that even possible without it being absolutely true? Because on the Zoomies bag, that prehensile vagina that's coming out of a dimension, it's like a worm that's coming out of a dimension and the worm has teeth, same as Miley Cyrus's crotch, and it's eating sperm. That's identical to the Vatican. The Vatican is a serpent, and in the mouth of the serpent is a a bunch of angels that are being devoured in the form of semen. So what is the agenda? What is the world? What is the whole world all about? Well, the Bible says in angels that left their first estate, he is kept in everlasting chains of darkness, awaiting the judgment of the great day. The word everlasting chains of darkness, the definition is forward and backwards ligaments of the body, which is made manifest again by the outward manifestation of clothing and logos and tennis shoes, tennis shoes that say fallen with an F pointing one direction, F pointing the other direction, tennis shoes called bait by YG that say, fuck you, pay me on the tongue, lost angel on the heel. It's so redundantly obvious at this point for anyone to deny it, you would have to be delusional that the human host body and the female was used to destroy angels. And the Bible says in Genesis, neither shall you touch it lest you die the forbidden fruit the tree of the knowledge of good and evil neither shall you touch it lest you die it means euphemistically to lie with a woman so if the angels were willing to choose to make the decision to lie with a woman then they were willing to go against their creator and engage in a cannibalistic system which is murderous and incestuous and it is the ultimate sin against God because the angels of God become food for a race of beings in the eternal abyss that are locusts. And it is the ultimate sin. And that is made obvious even on album covers like Ozzy Osbourne, ultimate sin. Now let's move on to some other relationships. So as far as moving on to some other data goes, let's talk about this. Satan is the prince of 
darkness. I mean, imagine darkness where you can't see, you can't perceive, you can't understand. Now, let me just paint this picture for you that's been revealed by all the information through a supernatural gift and the Word of God proving it. So we've turned this whole thing into like a sci-fi movie that was invisible to your sight. So imagine the Prometheus movies or the Alien Covenant movies where the human host body is being used to host, is a host. So it's really a shell, but what it's birthing is a worm, a locust from the pit. So if you start with a host body and inside of it, you you put uh, a xenomorph, you put this worm that's living off the host body, um, just like these movies, uh, especially the one with uh, David doing the experiments, when that creature hatches out of the guy's host body, it stands up and it it does like what you would might call the muscle man position where it's got his arms bent and upraised. What he's doing is he's exemplifying Nut, the system, the female system that has the female turning the male upside down in the system and killing him and taking his soul. That's Nut. What do you believe in, David? Creation. The reason the Vatican is a snake is there's a serpent race. It's a race of beings, the serpent. And what they do is they set a trap called the host body. And the host body is the natural man referred to in 1 Corinthians 15. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. It says the natural body comes first. And that's Genesis 1. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then it says the spiritual body comes second, it is the Lord from heaven. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So we know that in Genesis 2, when Adam and Eve come into the picture, that the Lord God has already breathed into Adam the breath of life and man has become a living soul. And so that represents all of the angels that were willing to come into the system will be going into a system that's already created a host body with the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of Elohim. And then in Genesis 2, it is the Lord from heaven, Jesus. And so Adam is the representative of Christ. And so then the living soul goes into uh, that host body we call Adam, and then in Genesis 3, there's the fall uh, and the commingling of the races, and then you have a cannibalistic system within the host body system. So Cain and Abel are a representation of what's going on inside of you. It is a cannibal. So this serpent race uses the host body system in a cannibalistic way in order to eat you from the inside and see you couldn't see it going on because people have a misconception of what their soul is and their animate energy which is what god gives you you get one soul but there is a double spirit working you there's an angel from heaven that's being destroyed and there's a demon from the pit that's taking the angel and that angelic essence to the pit in order to form a locust in order to assimilate the the angel into the locust it's everything is biblical that's why satan is the king of the insects he's the king of the locusts with tails like scorpions and that's why it manifests over and over and over again so the point is everything was like an invisible sci-fi movie 
on steroids that you could not even see. But the manifestation of the imagery, like Michelangelo, the bust he has, where there's a worm coming out the neck. If you look at the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel, off to the side, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel has a giant worm with its mouth open. So Jesus told you, you didn't want to get cast into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. He didn't say it once. He said it repetitively. In Job, uh, how can a man born of a woman be made right with God and a man that is a worm? It specifically calls us a worm, man that is a worm because the host body is a worm and it's attached to the pit and so then you also have uh, Joel I will restore to you the years the canker worm is eaten and the locust um, and the great army I sent among you for those that rebelled against the most high it is over and over in the scriptures in Ezekiel I am against you women who hunt the souls of men to make your pillows lie and when you look at uh, the imagery, these women with tattoos of what looks like a beetle, and then she opens her arm, um, and it, the beetle's flying, but it's really a vagina. So to have a tattoo that represents the female reproductive system, and then she has labia on her elbow on the inside, and then she opens her arm, and then it becomes a beetle flying, representing women who hunt the souls of men to make your pillows fly. Uh, the pillows representing down in the pit, the attachment to each host body. Um, so just like a, a wasp has a pupa. Well, think of a pupa with a Bluetooth line to your left eye. So it's a double internet signal, so to speak. One goes to heaven, that's the angel. One goes to hell, that's the demon. And the essence inside of you that's given to you by the Lord God, your soul is the prize. And it's all done covertly right in front of your face all the time. And so now it's become manifest because the scriptures declare it over and over again. In Job, several times, the worm will feed sweetly on you and you will no longer be remembered. The womb will forget thee. The womb is matrix, by the way. Anyway, so all the scriptures support it. Elohim creates a host body system that is the trap. That's why it's manifest in so many items of clothing and different agendas in movies and right in front of your face all the time. So they created the host body system as a trap for the angels and they are awake. They are will, uh, they are in a willful way hunting you. What's hunting you is a serial killer and the serial killer is the angel of the bottomless pit and he uses the host body system as a cloaking device in order to hunt you to breed more of his kind in the pit and see nobody really knows what the uh, the eternal abyss is except for the descriptions we have in the bible and some ancient cultures but it is painfully obvious now that the original inhabitants and they know they are the original inhabitants are the ones that got the trap set for God's angels, which is the host party system. The only way out of the system is to turn back to the Lord God. Jesus Christ is the only name under heaven whereby you must be saved because he is El, the almighty God that came into the system. He is the only true God. And if you don't know El, El, the almighty God, who came in the form, the likeness of sinful flesh in the form of Emmanuel, that's it said, you will call his name Emmanuel with us is El, the almighty God. So El, the almighty God is willing to pay the cost of his own angels rebelling against him he's willing to pay for their mess up on a cross so therefore if you don't take that then the serpent race the serpent carries out its final destruction plan for you which is assimilating you into a locust but then hell is resurrected and thrown to, into the lake of fire and just imagine that system being burned as fuel and you will be that fuel so now I'd like to talk to everybody. <clears throat> the beginning of this presentation, uh, we used a clip from a movie called The Usual Suspect, where a guy that was posing as somebody else was really the devil in the flesh, Kaiser Sose. Anyway, he said the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was getting the world to believe he didn't exist. And in that very moment, we showed you the greatest trick 
the twin female energy that started the host body system through parthenogenesis is hiding that energy, that entity, that angel of the bottomless pit. The energy is twin female. And that creates a system called the host body, the flesh. And the angels that come into the flesh get their own evil doppelganger because it's a twin female system. So if you're an angel and you come into the system, the system is designed that you get a twin as soon as you get in. And the the twin is attached to the pit to your own worm. That is the entire system of the world. And the Bible's made it manifest uh, over and over and over again through all the scriptures. Who can make straight or equalize that which Elohim has turned upside down? Elohim set the trap in Genesis 1 by making the host body system. Genesis 2, the Lord God puts his representative Adam in the system, the spiritual man, the two interbreed in Genesis 3. Uh, Genesis 4 is the evolution or the manifestation of the system within you, Cain and Abel, cannibal. Now, the Kaaba, the Kaaba in Mecca, the cornerstone of their, of their entire religion and the cornerstone of the satanic religion is taking a singularity and splitting it into two things. That's why there's the twin towers and that's why there's all this twin female everything. Just like the Ian Bud Light, when he took the deal from Kelly, the female warrior, he goes on a date with twin females and it shows him get his own doppelganger, Don Cheadle, dressed identically to him. Now that represents that Ian is in the system and in order to be reconciled, it would be Don Cheadle and Ian uh, as opposing forces, just like the crosses at Calvary. There would be Ian on one side and then Ian's doppelganger on the other side, Christ in the middle to reconcile both. So the system is designed for an angel to come in and be split into two things. The angel has a doppelganger. You saw that again in the Justin Timberlake video. And that video was so profound because it showed Justin Timberlake uh, with his own doppelganger and his doppelganger is cannibalized, which is perfect. It, it uh, manifests Cain and Abel, cannibal. And he is cannibalized by the group on the dance floor because you're born into a vampiric system. So everyone on the dance floor is vampiric. They cannibalize him. He's guilty of blood guiltiness for interbreeding with them. So then his doppelganger representing Satan, the satanic one that took over, leaves in the car with the good one in the trunk, the angel version of himself in the trunk with a worm eating him. That's exactly the scriptures. So anyway, so now it's been made manifest. The corner of the Kaaba has a rock in it that they allege is from the Garden of Eden, a stone that fell from heaven. Think of the Rolling Stones, think of rock and roll, think of that Cain killed Abel with a stone, with a rock. Because they rolled us, and when they got us into the system, they made, they split us in two, and we became dualistic. Jesus Christ on the cross is the exact opposite to make the, the dualistic you one new man from the two, thus making peace. Uh, the Vatican is a representation of the serpent system. When you come into the mouth of the serpent, which is a vagina, then it shows male and female reproductive systems. Um, also, uh, the Kaaba, the Kaaba in Mecca is a vagina. And when you stand directly in front of it, it'll split your reflection into two people while maintaining the circle around it, still having your reflection. So there'll be a double you. And then as you drop your head, you bow down, you bend to put your head inside of it to kiss it. When you go into a convex mirror, it inverts you. So Islam prays with their heads to the ground, showing that they worship the pit, the God of the pit, the, the original uh, host body system, if you will, which is parthenogenesis, which is a twin female system. That's their God. And that's their cornerstone. That's why they have a vagina there that splits your, your image into two. And when you put your head in to kiss it, it inverts you. If you were to put sperm in that cornerstone, it would invert the sperm, the light representing 
the light that goes into a vagina is inverted. The light is God's angels is inverted and then is birthed out into a human being and you are attached to the pit now. So you have to be reconciled by Christ. All right, folks, God bless you guys. I typically say welcome to This Is It, 4321 Before the Fire. Let's go. I do that as our own little cheer to keep going, keep walking, persevere. The Bible says that love is patient. It says suffers long. It's been a lot of time that I've been ringing a bell for the Lord since 2002. Um, I want to have a heart to heart talk with you. If you'll just give me a few minutes of your time. Um, I want to speak to you from my heart and just tell you if you are me, uh, I need y'all to just know, I need you to know my heart and what's in my mind. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get a chance to talk again after any video that I do. I, I never know anymore because I see the eventuality of a train that's come off a track and it's shot off a bridge. It's already off the track. And you know it's going to hit the bottom, and it's just a matter of moments. And I need just to say what's in my soul and my heart to all of you. I love you in Christ. I, I wish I could save every single person there is, even my enemies, even the people that have risen up against me that hate me, the even people that have maligned me and spoken lies about me. I wish... I could help them. There's, that's my, uh, it's just my heart. It's just what I wish I could do. So, you just got through watching this presentation where I tried to put together for you the information that the Lord God has poured through me over these years and the things that it's wound up at, where it's arrived. And it's arrived at a place that now that I have eyes to see, in hindsight, it's actually very predictable. However, the journey to get there was anything but predictable. And what I mean by that is we've ended up at the human race, the host body, the flesh, is being taken over now by a race of beings that's a spiritual race. It's a demonic race from the pit, from the bottomless pit. And the angel of the bottomless pit is rising up through the human host body system, and it's taking over. And there's, it's called the serpent race, and it's Satan's rule on earth. And Satan, his spiritual essence, is taking over all the people's bodies. All their temples are falling to Satan. And so it's ended up at an insect race. That's where everything's ended up. Lady Gaga, you know, at the Grammy or the Oscar Awards, wearing her dress with the insect and the serpent down on the bottom part. Uh, Dee Antwerd, uh, her video, Lady Gaga, again, birthing, uh, birthing a locust. The Even the name Gaga is alphanumerically is 7171. It means extirpation, which means just total annihilation. And, uh, from a biting insect. That's uh, 7171 in the Bible. Even the name Gaga itself represents it because she's like a spokesperson, but I don't want to focus on her. I want to focus on the overall picture. The Vatican has a guy in a slave collar. You turn him upside down. He's an insect. The corner post of the canopy in the center of the Vatican underneath the dome, which is an eye, when you look up, there's an eye looking down. It's an eye that looks like a human eye. Then there's a canopy. And underneath the canopy is an eye that's the eye of a serpent, but it's divided by 
a canopy. You can't see the eye on the ceiling because of the canopy that's in between the eye on the ceiling and the serpent eye on the floor. On the corners of the posts of the canopy, there's locusts coming up from the ground. Insects, it's consistently the same. Serpents killing sheep, insects killing sheep. It's always the same now. And so remember how I just said it's predictable now in hindsight, but uh, on the journey, it wasn't predictable. And let me show you what I mean by that. The night I got saved, I got saved at the St. Anthony Hotel in the alley. The word, the Lord told me, look up the meaning of Anthony and means priceless one. Now, this is something very personal, and I'm just going to share it very quickly with you. The Lord told me I had to look up where I was born. I was born in a place called Frankfurt, Germany, Frankfurt. And the Lord told me to look up the meaning of Frankfurt. Frankfurt means the crossing of the ford, the crossing of the river, the ford, to the other side. That's what it means. Um, then the Lord told me to look up the meaning of the name Anthony because I got saved at the St. Anthony. It means the priceless one. And then the Lord told me to look up the name of Travis because St. Anthony is on Travis Street. And when I talked to Michael, uh, when I prayed with Michael in the back of the St. Anthony in the alley, I received Christ, the priceless one. And then when I, when I went around the, the, when I ran around the hotel to the front of the building after passing my, I guess, test with the San Antonio police department, where I spoke only the truth to them, it was a test. Then I was at Travis Park when Michael gave me my marching orders. Now, you can either believe me or not, but I have 70,000 images that prove what I'm saying. I have over 5,000 videos that I've done, all pointing to the same thing. But I was at the Travis Park when uh, Michael gave me my marching orders. And as I sat there and I wept and I wept, and I told him, I said, I know I'm supposed to go somewhere. I just don't know where it is I'm supposed to go. And I'm supposed to, like, I know I'm supposed to try and gather people to go somewhere. But, and I just sat there and wept in front of him. And I was just going, I know I'm supposed to go somewhere. I just don't know where I'm supposed to and, and Michael said very calmly to me, he said, Jonathan, that little voice you hear speaking to you now, that's God speaking to you. Learn to trust his voice. And Jonathan, every little thing you get to eat and every little thing you get to drink, even if it's water, thank God, because it all comes from him, Jonathan. And I, I sat there and just wept and said, okay, yes. And then he said, don't worry, Jonathan. You'll know what to do. You'll be okay. You're, you'll know what to do. Well, that was in 2002. Okay. The Lord has sent me to places like Chinati where I've documented it. For those of y'all that have been here, y'all know the miracles that I've, I posted before the miracle ever happened. I told everybody I was going to Chinati that the Lord told me I had to go take my skydiving gear. I, I needed to go there. He was going to have me skydive somewhere into the desert to meet face to face. I thought for sure I was going to die face to face. No one meets the Lord face to face and lives. But I heard him say to meet face to face. And I thought, well, I'm going to die. But I was willing to go. I was willing to go. And I was willing to tell people before I went to Chinati, this is what the Lord told me. Well, when I got to Chinati and I, once I was in my little room there and I went and searched out airplanes, at every single airport I could find within a hundred mile radius, I could not find any aircraft that would fly me to altitude. So I called my friend Kat and I was like, I was, I was in despair. I said, Kat, I don't know what to do. I'm, I did what the Lord said. I'm here. I'm here. I've been here. I've, I've gone to every airport. I've checked every ad. I've, I've done everything. I've exhausted all my resources to try and find an airplane, a helicopter, any vehicle that could get me to altitude because the Lord sent me here. He said he was going to have me skydive into the desert. I told everybody on YouTube that. I told you guys, this is what he said I was going to do. And there I was in the, 
There is no way to get a plane, nothing. And as I was talking to Kat, telling her those exact words, right then the, the Lord said, Jonathan, go to the Alpine Airport right now while I was lamenting. And I said, Kat, this is crazy. The Lord's telling me to go to the Alpine Airport, but go right now. So I was in my vehicle and I said, okay. I grabbed my other phone. I grabbed my other phone. I mapped it. It was about a 30, 40 minute drive from where I was at. And I had Kat on the phone and I drove straight to that airport in Alpine. And when I got there, I walked through a little gate and there was a little building there and there was a guy on the phone. And I walked in and I looked at him and he looked at me and he just like acknowledged me, but he didn't get off the phone. So I sat down. It was a very small little building, very small, maybe, you know, 20 by 20, 20 feet by 20 feet, little teeny building. Anyway, so um, I sat down and I sat there for about 10 minutes. And then some guy walks in the door and the guy had tats all over him. You know, he looked like just kind of like a, a biker dude. And I he walks in the door and I look at him. And as soon as that guy walked in the door, the guy that was sitting at the table, he uh, he sees him and he hangs up the phone right away and he acknowledges the guy walking in the door and says, like, hey, they're, they're buddies. You know, he was he was way too busy to get off the phone to help me out. But when that guy walked in the door, he hung up the phone immediately and was like, hey, what's going on? And then they both look at me and I, and I look at him and I go, yeah. And he goes, uh, what can I do for you? And I said, yeah. I'm trying to find a pilot in an aircraft. I'm trying to find anyone that could get me to altitude. I'm trying to do a, a jump. I'm a, I'm a skydiver and I have a D license. I'm a master skydiver and I'm trying to get a ride to altitude. And they both looked at each other at the same moment. They went, Cade. They both said his name at the same exact time. Cade. And I went, and I was very excited because I, I was about to freak out. Because I had already told everybody in YouTube land, social media, this is what the Lord. Now, can you imagine if you've already told everybody, look, the Lord told me this is where you're going. He walked me into an art gallery to show me a painting on the wall that said, uh, searching for greener pastures. Look at the name of the artist. It was Melvin Warren. And I heard the Lord say, look up the name Melvin Warren. And it was Chief Watchman. And it was a shepherd leading sheep in Chinati in Big Bend. That's how he got me to go. So when these two guys said, Cade, I was like, oh, my God, I may have a pilot in it because I was done. It was I mean, what would you do? I'd have to go on YouTube and say, guys, I. I didn't find a pilot. I guess I'm not jumping in the desert. Sorry, I mean, I guess I wasn't hearing from God. I, I would have had to say all those things to everybody. And I would have. But right then when they both said, Cade. I was like, oh, Cade, who's Cade? And they said, he's flying in right now. He's on approach. So imagine this. You're me. You've exhausted all your resources. You're out there in the desert. You're looking for any way to get to altitude. You're done. There's no way. To, it's not going to happen. You walk, You hear the Lord say, go to this airport right now. I walk in the door, and all of a sudden, a pilot is flying in, delivering an aircraft for someone that bought it. And they said, as soon as he lands, you can talk to him. The guy lands, gets out, walks over. I go, hey, how you doing, Jonathan Cleck? Trying to get a ride to altitude. He's like, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I'll do it. 500 bucks. Y'all you, know that's not possible, right? You know it's not possible that he gave me two halves of the same rock and told me to put them face to face. Get it? The rock face to face. I was like, oh, my God. Well, I'm the guy that's telling everybody what being on the rock is. That's my part of my mission statement for my ministry to tell you guys there's a right side up you and there's an upside down you. You have your own evil doppelganger. The the upside down you is the evil part that goes to the pit. Right side up is the angel part that goes to heaven. And if you don't get converted before you die, you're going to the pit. And that's been my my job. And along the way, the whole thing has turned into the largest altar in the world is a bug harvesting semen. That's what the Vatican altar is. The mouth of the bug is the mouth of the serpent. Wow. I told you hindsight's twenty twenty now, but it wasn't on the journey. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Um, let me play this. This is a 
this is a trailer for I think it's a series called Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem. Well, I read their language. Three is Angel of the Bottomless Pit. Body Problem. The problem with your body is the Angel of the Bottomless Pit owns it, and he's a bug. He's an insect. He's the king of the insects. Did y'all know that Satan is the king of the locusts from the pit? That's what Revelation 9, verse 11, 9, 11, you know, when the twin twin towers were bombed? That's why they bombed them on 9-11. Because there's an insect race that owns the host body system. Three, body problem. Angel of the abyss, body problem. Because you got a body, but he owns it. It's his. He, he started the host body system. Let me show you this trailer. Then I'm going to show you the hindsight thing. And then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do in the next day or two before um, I don't know if anything's going to happen on this eclipse. I don't know. But I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't at least show you what the Lord showed me. Kind of like when he told me to go to Chinati. I told you guys the way he showed me to go to Chinati. And there's a whole video on how he got me to go there by walking me into an art gallery. He told me to go into this art gallery. He wanted to show me something, and I did what he said, and then he proved to me he wanted me to go to Chinati. Okay, without going out on a sidetrack, let's watch this trailer. The beginning of my ministry started started with me knowing the night I got saved that there was another race of beings inside the host bodies when I was arrested by the police department that night. I knew it, and I, I said, they're, they're not human, they're something else. And I, I mentioned that they were like insects the night I got arrested. The night I got saved is the night I got arrested by them. Okay, let me show you something real quick. Hello. Don't be afraid. We are everywhere. And we will teach you how to fear again. We make you see what we want you to see. When you know your planet is doomed, what is the solution? That is the challenge we face. Every civilization ends in chaos. And if one of us survives, we all survive. Okay, so that's playing on Netflix. Now, for those of y'all that, you know, have been here, y'all know that I can open up folders and show you, prove to you, that the human host body is being used for a race of insects. There's folder after folder that prove it. The night I got saved, let me show you something. So you're looking at aerial views of, this is the St. Anthony right here. There's the St. Anthony Hotel. And it's on Travis Street. And let me show you that real quick. So Travis Street is the street right in front of the hotel. And if I go right here and I enlarge this image, uh, this is St. Anthony Hotel right here along this edge. The night I, I got saved, I got saved in the back of this hotel. But after I passed my test and telling the whole truth, the San Antonio Police Department, which most people probably never would have done. I had a conversation with Michael right here after I was let go. And I sat right here and I wept. And right here, he and I were talking. That's where I got my marching orders. Within 30 minutes after walking across this street right here, because I don't want to give you the whole testimony. It's on YouTube. 
I walked across this street right here. See where this red bus is? And when I walked across this street right here, this entire block, there were cop cars here, 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 here. Imagine police lights going off around the entire block. This entire block. I mean, now don't forget, 100% no line is what this ministry is based on. No line, no matter what. You tell the truth, even if it means your ass, you speak the truth. I'm looking at you right now. That entire block lit up with cop lights, red and blue, around the entire whole thing. For one guy walking across the street. For one person walking across the street. And a loudspeaker said, draw to the click, put your hands behind your back. As I was in this new condition, this new revised, I was glowing. I was not what I was. I had gotten converted in the alley. I was something totally different, like something in Star Trek. What I'm saying is, I knew that I no longer belonged here, like here on the earth. I knew I wasn't part of it anymore. So as I walked across that street and I hear, Jonathan, click, put your hands behind your back. I looked over and I all these cop lights turned on around the entire block. Can you imagine that many cop cars for one guy walking across the street? I hadn't been charged with anything, nothing. I never was charged with anything. They detained me. But when they said that, Jonathan Cleck, put your hands behind your back. I was right here. There were cops walking here, 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 here. They were coming from all directions towards me right here. And as they got right up close next to me, and they were all like within feet of me, the police were talking to each other. And they were going, hey, that was like shooting a deer at the feeder. I heard him specifically say, that was like shooting a deer at the feeder. And the other cop said, hey, it was like shooting a fish in a barrel, man. And I was like, what in the world is going on? Oh my God, they're not human. I was like, they're insects or something. That was in 2002. Why is the largest altar in the world an insect? Why is there a serpent being on the door of an Austin police car? I mean, I've shown you guys the images, right? After I do this little speech, I'll go click on a couple of them just to remind you. Why is the Vatican a snake? Why is the largest church in the world that claims it's Christian, why is it built in the shape of Satan? Satan is the serpent. So the largest church in the world that claims it's Christian is really Satan. Why is the largest altar in the world an insect harvesting semen? Why is an image of a guy that's in a slave collar at the Vatican why, when you turn him upside down, is he an insect? Why do all these girls that I showed you have tattoos of mandibles on their labia? Why is an insect's mouth called labium? Why does D'Anford have Lady Gaga birthing a, a locust? That's a weird thing. Why can I show you all this stuff over and over and over and over again? And the reason is because it's true. That's why the human race is an insect race. It's a vain show. It's a representative figure, especially in idol. Because if when it was originally formed, it was formed by Elohim. And they said, let us create man in our image. And the word image means a phantom to shade an illusion, a representative figure, especially an idol. The Lord God doesn't make idols. So anyway, so here's the point. 
the night I got saved, I knew there was an insect race or some some other entity running the host bodies that were showing up, all of them mocking me. I was like, what in the hell is, who are these guys? Why would they say all that stuff? Well, they're an insect race. That's all there is to it. Now, I just played you a trailer called You Are Bugs from Three Body Problem. Angel of the Bottomless Pit, the number three, Angel of the Bottomless Pit. Body Problem, he owns your body. That's a problem. That means you got to pay him for it. He wants your soul. And if you don't sign your allegiance over to him in the very near upcoming future by taking the Mark of the Beast, and being one of them, if you don't hand over your free will to them, well, then they're going to kill you. That's what's going on. Now, I love you in Christ. You don't have to believe anything I said. I wish it wasn't true, to be honest. But it's all true. The whole thing's true. So, in the next day or two, for sure, before the weekend's over, before Sunday, I'm going to give you a testimony. I went down to Travis Park last night. The Lord told me to go down there. I had a demonic encounter with a guy. I I got it. I got part of it on video, so you can see the odd something very odd he did. You'll know something wasn't right. And then as I sat down to you know document what was going on, I heard the Lord tell me to look up. Uh, let me show you where I was last night when the Lord told me to look up. I was sitting on a bench right here. So there's a sidewalk right here. There's a bench right here. And I was sitting on a bench right here. Now, remember the night I got I got saved I was also the night I got arrested. So I got arrested right here by when all the cops were coming at me. And then last night I was sitting on a bench right here. And I, I was asking the Lord, like, why why am I down here? Why did you tell me to come down here? And I heard the Lord tell me to look up. Now I am telling you a 100% truthful testimony. And I looked up and there was a swarm of insects right over my head. I mean like, ugh. Like they were right here. Like not over there, over there. I mean, they were right on top of my head. Just everywhere. And I and I heard the Lord say, look up. And I went like that. And I was like, whoa. And I even got my camera out. I got my phone out. And I recorded it, so you'll be able to, you'll you'll know I'm telling you the truth. I recorded it, and I thought, how strange. The news channels here in San Antonio are saying that the eclipse is going to be viewed in San Antonio at Travis Park. Well, I told you, the Lord told me I had to look up the place I was born. Frankfurt means the crossing of the ford. It means crossing to the other side of the river. The crossing of the ford at the lower, like shallow part of the river. The Lord told me to look up where I got saved, St. Anthony. It means the priceless one. And he said, look up Travis. That's the street it's on. And that's uh, where I talked to Michael to get my marching orders. Travis means the crossing. Now, can you imagine the race of locusts from the pit crossing over into our dimension? That's what happens in Revelation 9. Revelation 9 is about the pit opening and the locusts coming out of the pit into our dimension. And it's a very horrifying moment in the Bible. But what's fascinating is the night I got saved, I knew I was being arrested by whatever was running that host body wasn't human. It was something different. And insects was in my mind. Isn't it weird that here we are in 2024 and everything the Lord's let me solve is the human race's insects? Why does the, Jesus even said it's better to pluck out one eye? Because you have one eye that goes to an insect, to a worm. He says it's better to pluck out one eye and enter heaven with one eye than to be cast into hell where the worm never dies because the worm that's feeding off you off that eye where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. So if you end up in their dimension, you're done and the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. It's eternal torture. And I don't want you to be there even if you're my worst enemy. I still love you in Christ. Even if you hate my guts, I still love you in Christ. I may not like you, or I may not think you're great or anything, but I still love you in Christ. I don't want you to die eternally, no. Anyway, I hope you guys 
after you watch the presentation that we just did, Zach and I, you really watch it at least once and maybe twice and maybe pause it and read the scriptures that are put there for you so you understand this is not my opinion. I'm not some YouTube guy that's like, oh, this is what I think. No, no, no. I'm a servant of the Most High. The Lord has me lay hands on people that are blind and they see. The Lord has me lay hands on people that have incurable diseases and they get well. The Lord has me do the gift of miracles follows me wherever I go. It's beyond the human brain and it's been established for over 20 years and the record will speak for itself. And I just feel like I should tell you now that he took me down there last night and there was a swarm of insects over my head. I just find it weird. I feel like the Lord's letting us know the time is imminent. And for all of y'all to be prayed up and know you got to, if you're not converted, if you haven't been turned quite around that you're not converted. If you haven't, if you don't understand what it means, if you don't know what being on the rock is, then you're not in Jesus's church. The word church means a calling out. You're not in his ecclesia. So I would encourage you to go to the collectfiles.com or go back uh, to the beginning of even this YouTube channel and binge watch videos because the Lord has given me a spirit of prophecy and a spirit of knowledge and wisdom that is beyond anything I've ever seen. And I've looked for other people that can show this kind of stuff and they're not out there. I've seen other people that know it. Only one that I can say consistently nails it. So anyway, I just want you to be okay. I want your kids to be okay. I want you to be okay. I want your moms and dads to be okay. I want everyone to be okay. And I'm scared for the world. I'm not scared for me. The only thing that would make you not afraid, if you saw the entire human race all of a sudden, you knew that some other thing was running them. Like your world turned into a nightmare in an instant. There's only one thing that keeps me from being afraid of that. Knowing that I know the Lord. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth, which is, by the way, Jesus is the spirit of all truth. And the truth will set you free. Free of what? Set you free from the fear of death. Set you free from the fear of death. Then you're set free from everything. No, Nothing can control you anymore if you're not afraid of death. They can't control you if you're not afraid of death. And when you know Christ, you're no longer afraid of death. And if you're not on the rock and you haven't been turned up, because you got turned upside down by coming into your host body. If you haven't been converted, which means turned the opposite direction, then you don't know Christ. And I love you enough to tell you, even though I've taken a lot of heat and a lot of hatred for speaking the truth. Anyway, before I came out here, I, I prayed. I'm like, I don't know what to tell everybody. The Vatican's a snake. Oh my God, it's a snake. I was born and raised Catholic. My family was Catholic. As soon as I was converted, I was thrown in the gutter by my, my own family. Go read Psalm 27. The Lord, that was the first thing the Lord showed me after I got saved. And I was trying to figure out what was going on after I was arrested and held for two weeks. They had to let me go because they had no charges against me. But they wanted me out of the picture. The Lord showed me Psalm 27 as I was walking down the street. Told me, look up Psalm 27, read it. Even when your mother and father forsake you, the Lord will lift you up. Set you, your head high upon a rock. I've been trying to show everybody what being on the rock is. There's a good you, the angel. There's a bad you, the demon. The flesh host body is owned by Satan. If you don't get the rent paid by Christ, then you go to hell. Period. And everything proves it. So, I just want to let you know. 
Like, just like when I had to go to Chinati and tell everybody, I'm going to the desert. This is what the Lord told me to do. And I, I, I believed God. So I spoke, I spoke it. I didn't say, I didn't go, oh, you know, I'll let you know when it happens. No, I told everybody. This is what he said. I told everybody about him walking me into an art gallery. I've kept a folder of all this information. He made sure I had a plane. He gave me two halves of the same rock in the riverbed where he had my LZ set up and he split my LZ in half by a flood that he created as I went and caught my air my airplane to make the jump. He flooded the entire river that was dry. <laughs> anyway, okay. I love you guys. I just don't know what to do to help y'all to save anyone anymore. Does that make sense? I want to save everybody. Anyway, so one thing that makes me feel really good when I'm a little bit down, like right now, because I feel like I can't get any more people in the boat. It doesn't seem like the world's responding. It's like the world doesn't even care. I can show people the bombings of all the buildings printed on U.S. currency. I can show them that the Twin Towers is printed on your $20 bill. So is the Pentagon. It's printed on the other side. So our own government blew up our own buildings. That's pretty freaking serious. But no one cares. I can show people, look, the Vatican's a snake. No one cares. I'm like, my God, a human in a slave collar, you turn it upside down, it's a bug. No one cares. I can show them all this supernatural stuff, but no one cares anymore. So I know when the during the time of Noah, there came a cutoff. I know there's a cutoff coming. I don't know if it's during the eclipse or tonight or tomorrow. I don't know when it is. But I know it's coming because it all falls in 100% perfect line with everything that's happened to me and everything he's endowed me with and everything he's shown me has been proven. The Vatican is a snake birthing another snake. It's a twin female system. The angel gets trapped. And when it's a twin female system, your male energy gets an evil doppelganger, period. That's what the whole system is, to get your good half and send it to the pit so they can consume you. So now I've warned you. I've rang the bell. I've given warning. So if you didn't listen, I hope maybe there's a chance if you're watching this and there's a calling away and they blame, oh, oh they were all, you know, some disease. All of a sudden, a bunch of people are laying on the ground dead after some quick event. Oh, my God, they all got poisoned, whatever. It was some kind of an attack, whatever. There's a calling away coming. Maybe you can get turned then, but you got to turn back. Okay. Now, when you discover the other side, it's like crossing to the other side of the road and just... You had to cross it to discover it. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Well, when I crossed back into God's kingdom behind the St. Anthony, the Lord told me to look up the meaning of the word Travis because it's on Travis Street, and that's where I talked to Michael. It was right there in Travis Park. You know what Travis means? It means the crossing to the other side where the toll gets paid. The crossing where the toll gets paid. So imagine you're me. Your name means Yahweh has given. A bell ringer and a messenger that gathers the church. That's what Jonathan Clegg means. Jonathan, Yahweh has given. So imagine that's what your name means and your birthplace means. The crossing of the ford to the other side. So I was born into the serpent system. And that's where I came in. So my essence came in and was in a host body. And it was delivered in the crossing of the ford. And then I get saved at a place called the priceless one in the alley. And then the Lord tells me to look up the name of the street it's on, which is Travis, where I talked to Michael. 
And it means the crossing to the other side where the toll gets paid. You don't think I'm a messenger? <laughs> it's harder for me to believe I'm not a messenger than I'm a messenger. And as hard as that was to believe, it's like there's too much evidence. It'd be impossible. So anyway, I'm going to play for you a little video uh, that Zach did. It's one of my favorite videos of all time ever. And he took the movie Rango, which, by the way, I highly recommend. It's just a kid's movie, but it's it's so packed full of spiritual reality that I think everyone should watch the movie Rango. And listen, pay attention. And Zach took that that movie Rango, and he took some scenes out of it. And he built a little video around a song. And if you'll listen to the lyrics and you understand that in order to know God, you you literally do have to cross over back or you'll never know him. And the only way to cross back over to the other side is where the toll gets paid. Because when I crossed into this place, nothing's made sense my whole life. None of it. And then I got saved, and as much as it didn't make sense, then all of a sudden it all started making sense. And now everything makes sense, all of it. It's the only thing that made sense of everything. But I crossed back to the other side where the toll got paid. So I'm trying to help you, and I want you to come home, and our Father wants you to come home. And I was a messenger sent to ask you to please come home. Please turn back. Please come back. Please accept the free pardon before it's too late so you do not have to suffer the wrath of what's coming on this place now. That's the best I know how to put it, guys. I wish I was more eloquent. I wish I had some great way of just rattling everybody. But just from my heart, I love you in Christ, and I wish I could save you myself. But if you'll look at what the Lord gave me to give you and you want to know, He'll make it happen. I guarantee it. If you truly are willing to give your life away to know Christ, he will make sure that you know him. And he'll take away all your fears. He'll take away your fear of death. And you will not think you know. You will know that you know him. Okay. All right. So this little video coming up next. God bless you. It's just the best way I know how to try and get you in a. Here you go, guys. Let's be in a good, happy frame of mind and let's be grateful and gracious to our king for what he did for us to get us back and as we march it out and let's just pray for the world that's lost right now as we watch them spiraling down the drain at this point because the world's on its way down the drain i know y'all can see it all right i love you in christ peace and grace um it wouldn't be right if i didn't give everybody a bear hug i don't have my bear here with me but i'm gonna pause this and go get my bear. Just a minute. I'll tell you what I can do. I got my two lions. <laughs> That's kind of appropriate, right? And the two have been made one. And I'm hoping that for you, that your duality, there's a good you, and then there's a bad you. And I pray that God reconciles both of them to him through the cross. And I love you in Christ. And I want you to come home with me back to heaven back to our Father, where I know I belong. I don't belong here. And I'm hoping you're one of us. Peace and grace. I love you in Christ. distant galaxy inside my telescope I see a pair of eyes peer back at me he walks and talks and looks like me sits around inside his house from room to room he moves about fills his life with pointless things and wonders how it all turns out
Desperately searching for signs Too terrified to find a thing He battens all the hatches down And wonders why he hears no sounds Frantically searching his dreams He wonders what it's all Well, you the man with no name. These days, they got a name for just about everything. Doesn't matter what they call you. It's the deeds make the man. Yeah, but my deeds just made things worse. I'm a fraud. I'm a phony. My friends believed in me, but they need some kind of hero. Then be a hero. Oh, no. No, no. I, you don't understand. I'm not even supposed to be here. That's right. You came a long way to find something that isn't out here. Don't you see? It's not about you. It's about them. But I can't go back. Don't know that you got a choice, son. No man can walk out on his own story. <laughs> 